Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Dallas Social Toastmasters. It is March 25th of 2021. We are, of course, still virtual. And as you can see from the background, things are beginning to change. Dallas finally changed to level orange from level red this week, just a couple of days ago. So things are finally beginning to improve in Dallas. But orange is still extreme caution, but better. Hopefully it will continue to improve and go to yellow and green really, really soon, and then maybe we can get rid of it. A couple of quick things about Zoom. Everybody's pretty much familiar with it, so I'm not going to go over too much. Just the usual reminders that for tonight, you have a timer, which is going to be Dagan Newland. Dagan is really good at timing and will have all the colors behind him, but you will need to make sure that you have him pinned. In each of the little squares that you see, the little squares with people in them, if you click on the dot, 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 you will find that there is a pin video or a pin right there that allows them to be front and center in your view. If you want to go to gallery view, and I think with 11 people, we may be able to fit everybody on. I can't remember if we see nine or, tw nine or 12, but if you go to gallery view, you may be able to see everybody that way. That's another alternative. Website, we are Dallas Social Toastmasters. This is our website right here, dallassocialtoastmasters.com. Three convenient columns. The third column is the member section. And the very first link there is the current agenda. When you click on that, it will take you to this, which is our agenda for tonight. Feel free to, excuse me, feel free to bring this up in a browser on your own and you can follow along with all of the roles tonight as we go through our meeting. And we try to update that usually just before the meeting, but we do try to update it so that it's always there for you to watch during our meeting. Anything else that I need to say? We've got all of our roles taken care of. We have all of our members here. We do not have to shift anything around. I think at that point, we're just ready to go straight into our meeting with our invocation and pledge, which is going to be given to us by Rob Giles. Take it away, Rob. Thank you very much, Mr. Zoom facilitator. I don't have an inspiration. You've already seen the agenda, which is on this day. And this is going to be us taking a look back at history on this day, March 25th. But what I do want to do is on this day, I want to do something that we used to do a lot and that we really haven't done. And it's something that as long as you can see this in my background, then you can do it with me. So give me one second. And hopefully you can see that. Can I get somebody to confirm that for me? So I would like for you to, if you could, is to help me in reciting our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate that. So on this day, before we get into our duty holders and their roles and their descriptions of what they're gonna be doing with us tonight, I want to go through a few things and take kind of a journey back down memory lane for some of us at least, perhaps some of the things that I'm gonna mention are gonna be things that some of you have never heard and I know that at least I had, there was at least one thing that I did not know about. I probably should have known about it because I'm not a young buck anymore. But the first thing, I wanna take you back to 1970. In 1970, the Concorde airplane made its first supersonic flight. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Concorde airplane, but that thing was fast and it was able to go across the Atlantic and it, it was a monumental thing 
for this airplane to take flight. So in 1970, it made its first supersonic flight. It was fast. The next thing that I want to take you back to is just one year earlier. And this was a little bit more in the realm of, I guess if you wanna say hippies or that whole time, and it was 1969, a musician or musicians by the name of John Lennon and Yoko Ono staged a bed in for peace in Amsterdam. And I don't know if any of you are aware of that. That was one thing that I had never heard. And my best guess is that a bed in is simply something similar to a sit in, except that I guess you're in bed. <laughs> and maybe I need to do a little research on that. Maybe that will prompt you to do a little research on that. I think it's probably interesting, but it was an interesting thing that I saw when I was looking back through items on this day, March 25th, in the past. The next thing goes back just a few years earlier, and that was in 1965. It was Martin Luther King Jr. And he led a group of 25,000 people to the state capitol in Montgomery, Alabama. And probably at least some of you are either familiar with it from hearing about it, or perhaps if, if you're old enough, maybe you recall your parents watching news about this or hearing about this back when you were a toddler. But regardless, it was a very big event that took place. And obviously Martin Luther King Jr. was a very impactful person in our American history. Another thing that happened, and this is, goes back even a little bit further, is in 1954, RCA manufactured the first color TV set and they began mass production. So the first color TV set from RCA came about in 1954. And that's a long time ago. We're, you know, in a couple of decades or a few decades and it's gonna be like a, a century ago. So right now we have such incredible TV sets, QLEDs, I think there's 8K definition out there now. And, and it's, it just keeps changing. It seems every few months I see a new TV with new capabilities, obviously they're smart TVs, but the first color TV back in 1954, and that was from RCA and when they began mass production. In, if you go back even further, and this jumps way back, 1990, 1919, so 1919, in this year, the Paris Peace Commission adopted a plan to protect nations from the influx of foreign labor. So how times have changed quite a bit since then, but back in 1919, that was done. The, peace, the Paris Peace Commission adopted the plan to protect nations from an influx of foreign labor. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and move into our duty holders. And then I'll step back into our time machine of sorts. I would like to go ahead and ask our first duty holder, Mr. Dagan Newland, would you please provide us with a description of what you'll be doing for us tonight as timer? Yes, as timer, I'll be timing different sections of the meeting. There'll be the pair of speeches, table topics, and evaluations. And when each of those sections meet the minimum time, they will get a green card here. And when they get the medium time, they'll get the yellow. When they get the end time, they'll get the red. And have 30 seconds to wrap up. Now, again, on speakers and evaluations, they have 30 seconds leeway on each, each side. Then table topics. Is, is one to two, well, first of all, table topic topics is one to two minutes, and you must hit one minute for table topics, and you have up to two minutes and 30 seconds. During eva uh, the evaluations are two to three minutes, so technically you have one minute, 30 seconds to two minutes, 
30 seconds to qualify for that. And for the speakers, I would, you both are five to seven. So again, you have four, technically you have four minutes, 30 seconds to seven minutes, 30 seconds to qualify within that time frame. And back to you, Dustmaster. Thank you very much, Dagan. I appreciate that. Our next duty holder is our vote counter. And our vote counter is Karen Smith. Please help me to welcome Karen. Karen, can you please tell us what you will be doing as vote counter tonight? As the vote counter, oh, sorry. Um, greetings, uh, Mr. Toastmaster and our Toastmaster individuals. As the vote counter, I have a dual role in the meeting to collect and count the votes for the contested events and to collect and distribute the notes for the speakers or any other participant in the meeting to whom someone wants to give feedback. Now as the vote counter, I will not um, have a vote unless there is a tie and I will be the tiebreaker in the event that there is a tie. And that is the duty of my role as the vote counter. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Karen, we appreciate it. So be sure that when you do place a vote, send a private chat to Karen so that she collects your votes and, and is able to tally everybody's throughout the meeting. Our next duty holder is our posture monitor. And our posture monitor tonight is Cheryl Schlegel. Cheryl, would you please let us know what you'll be looking for this evening? Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Uh, the posture monitor, I'll be watching all speakers to identify unusual or distracting postures, such as hair flipping or other distracting gestures. I'll keep track of the posture in writing and I'll report the results at the end of the meeting when called upon by the general evaluator. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much. We appreciate that, Cheryl. Our next duty holder is doing double duty tonight. And that is Epaul Goldenmary. Epaul is our ah counter and our grammarian. Epaul, will you please tell us what you'll be doing as far as ah counting and watching our grammar? Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. So my duty as the ah counter is to listen carefully for any filler words, crutch words like um, ah, uh, you know, and so, but, like, things like that, as well as repeated words. Uh, for people who maybe are thinking a little bit too much and they repeat a certain word, I'll also keep track of that, as well as some uh, extended pauses in, in speaking. Typically, I would use a clicker, but just for the Zoom format, I'll just keep that to myself and report it at the end for each person. For grammarian, it's my responsibility to pay close attention to all speakers and their use of language as well as grammar. Uh, I will make sure to note any misuses of the English language as well as any sort of good uses of the English language. As grammarian, it is also my duty to introduce the word of the day. For today's meeting, the word that I have chosen is, it's very difficult to see, I know. It's copacetic, which means fine, satisfactory, okay, basically that nothing is wrong, essentially. And the example sentence that I could use is, despite appearing bothered, the man insisted that he was indeed copacetic. Basically, he was fine. Each speaker is encouraged to use the word of the day in order to qualify for best table topics speech. You must use the word of the day in response to the question or topic. When the rep report for word of the day is called at the end, I will make sure to uh, give a, a report of who actually used the word um, as well as uh, I'll provide a grammarian's report at the end of the session. That's pretty much all I have. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Epal. Appreciate it. So that's it for our duty holders for the evening. But I'm going to go back into talking about our way back machine, as John Vessels would say. Maybe he was just quoting me. I don't know. But our time machine going back. This time, the last thing that I talked about was in 1919, the Paris Peace Commission. We're going to go back over 100 years before that 
1807. And in 1807, the British Parliament abolished the slave trade. British Parliament abolished the slave trade in 1807. So it's a pretty important date. And looking back in time now, where we are now, it probably is a little bit more of something that we might focus on. But that was in 1807. The next thing that I want to bring up is a little bit more lighthearted. And for any of you that love gambling and love to bet specifically on horses, in 1668, the first horse race took place in America in 1668. So pretty incredible that it was that far back. I don't know that they were betting on it, but I imagine probably somebody was. And that is all that I have right now. I will come back to a few things a little bit later, but we're gonna dive into our prepared speeches at this point. And it looks like, okay, yeah, we have a little bit, I kind of made things a little backwards there in our evaluations. But at this point, I'm going to ask our first speaker's evaluator. And that would be Mr. Mark Schroeder, who is evaluating Mr. Rob Giles' speech. Mr. Mark Schroeder, can you please help us out with telling us about a little bit what Rob is going to be talking about tonight? Absolutely, Rob. I would be happy to do that. And we will start with, of course, the fact that we don't really have any earthly idea who Rob Giles is. He's a brand new member of our club. So he's going to be doing an icebreaker. No, yeah, you, you guys know better than this. Rob is one of our more senior members of the club, and he does way too much, as evidenced by the fact that he does the club orientation or member orientation on the weekends, and tonight he's both Toastmaster and filling in as speaker, and picked such a wonderful topic of the day, which, by the way, one thing he did miss on March 25th, it also is International Waffle Day. So that's, if you don't know that, it was, it is something, it's international. There's actually a U.S. holiday called Waffle Day, and it is different than the international one. The international one is today. The U.S. one is in August. For the international one, it came out of Sweden. And the way to say waffle in Sweden is waffeldagen. I'm sorry, I didn't say that in Swedish. Waffeldagen. <laughs> so... A little bit of trivia there. Rob's speech tonight, he's going to be doing a speech which is for planning and implementation. He has spent time developing and implementing a plan for a small scale project. And for this particular speech, he's going to be delivering a well organized speech about some aspect of his experience doing so. It can be humorous, it can be informational, or any style that he chooses. He is, has complete freedom there but it should not be a report specifically on the content of the project. So he's done some planning for us and we're gonna get the benefits of his experience that he had in the process of doing the planning and implementation. His time is supposed to be five to seven minutes, I believe. Rob, correct me if I'm wrong, five to seven? I think we're five to seven. With that, I'll go ahead and introduce Rob with his speech, which is, oh, do I have his speech title? I do, it's on the agenda. Let me pull up the agenda. I put that, I dropped that a moment ago to get to the other, to get to the other, one second. Can y'all hear me? We can now. My connection just dropped. There we go, I've got it. Please welcome Rob for his speech, A Well-Oiled Machine. A Well-Oiled Machine, Rob Giles, five to seven minutes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. 
I missed I missed a lot of that, so I apologize. Well, we are ready for you to speak. Hello, Dallas Socia. I'm Rod Hodder. Mr. Jay Giles couldn't be here to tell you what he had to tell you tonight, so he asked me to come on in and help him out. So what am I here to talk about? Well, some of you may know that we have things that we have to plan for. We have things that we need to implement, and that is what Mr. J. Giles had to do. Now, was it as tough as some of the things that I got to do with setting up for my shows, my rock shows, but still, some of you have to plan and you have to implement. And when you do that stuff, it means that it takes time. Everyone's not a natural like I am. So Mr. Mr. J. Giles, he had to do something this past weekend. And what did he do? Well, maybe some of you were able to score some tickets to go, but it was the area contest for Area 33. And what did happen? Well, there were some good things. There were some bad things. But overall, it was good. And I'm here to tell you all about some of that. So, first thing, the bad things. Because I want to end on the good things, just like true Toastmasters do. So the first thing that I thought could have been better was this. He should have planned earlier. That Mr. J. Giles didn't plan early enough. He should have started getting help a long time ago. If he had done that, then he might have been a little bit more smooth at the end. So he could have gone out and gotten people earlier. Because in the end, he was scrambling around. And he couldn't find people. And he had to ask and beg people to join and help. So there was one thing. But there was another thing that wasn't so great. When that contest was going on, somebody else was talking. And he was supposed to be showing these slides or something like that. And he wasn't doing it properly. They were talking. And he was showing the slides over them. He shouldn't have done it. But he did it. And now he knows better. Well, let's go on to something good because those people that he was looking for and scrambling around to get, he eventually got all of them and they were good. They were really good. And they made his job a lot easier. He was thankful. It's just like my bandmates. When the drummer's out there drumming and the guitar player's swinging that ax and doing all he has to do, slapping the boss. Whenever he's doing that, then everything is good. The singer's singing the way they're supposed to sing. From Mr. G.J. Giles, he did that, and it went amazing. He got everybody briefed. They knew what to do, and he took the roles like professionals. And eventually, that contest was amazing. It was a sellout. If you'd have been there, you'd have known. Maybe you did score tickets and you showed up. And if you did, you knew that it was one of the best contests ever. And he knew that and he was very appreciative. The thing that he needs to figure out is about getting started earlier. And then he also needs to figure out how to do those slideshows. And then once he does that, he can have a great, great, great contest and it will run like a well-oiled machine. Back to you, Mr. Contest Master. Thank you so much, Rod. We appreciate it. <laughs> Hope I gave you long enough to get set up. I think I did. I set a timer to make sure that you had some. All right. So after that, talk about raising the bar for the next person. <laughs> 
All right. Thank you so much, Mark. I greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially with that little technical difficulty. <clears throat> but I'm back now. Of course, Mr. Rod Hodder has taken over my name. At this point, we're going to move into the second speaker for the evening. And that would be Mr. Lee King. But before we do that, I would like for his evaluator, Mr. John Vessels, to tell us a little bit about his project, his speech this evening. John, can you help us out with that? Well, yes, I can. Thank you, sir. Lee King is doing a speech. It's called Texas Butterflies. And the purpose of his project is for the member to present a speech on any topic, receive feedback, and apply the feedback to the second speech. The purpose of the speech is for the member to present a speech and receive feedback from the evaluator. Those kind of seem like the same thing, but whatever. Anyway, so his speech is five to seven minutes. It's called Texas Butterflies. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. You're on mute. Still on mute. You can't take it off me, so. And he just- It's a space bar. He's froze now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and he just froze. Let's just go ahead and introduce Lee King with the, but with the butterflies. Yes. Yeah. Texas, Texas butterflies. Texas, butter, Texas butterflies. Yeah. Texas butterflies. Lee King. Lee King. Texas butterflies. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, and our one guest for this evening. Tonight, I thought I would share an interesting topic that I did a report on a few weeks ago for a class that I'm taking. And it's on the different butterflies that fly over Texas. I think you will be rather surprised to learn how many butterflies actually fly over, over Texas. So, all of the butterflies that I'll show you a little bit later in this presentation all spend some part of their life in Texas. Interestingly, a lot of these butterflies come from very far, some as far north as Alaska, and then some as far south as Brazil and Guatemala. So they travel quite a ways to come to Texas and call Texas home. So what is unique about Texas and butterflies? The million dollar question. Well, for one thing, Texas is actually home to over 400 different species of butterflies, which is more than any other state in the country. So we actually see more butterflies here in Texas than we in any other state. And I found that interesting because it seems like we in Dallas probably see all of two different species. Of course, the monarch seems to be the one that we see the most of. They're either flying around in the sky or perhaps they're on someone's car, but nevertheless, they fly over Texas. Now, what makes Texas unique and why do we have so many butterflies? Well, for one thing, we have elevations as high as 8,751 feet above sea level along the Guadalupe Mountains. And of course, we've got the coast, we have pine wood forests, we have open air, spaces and lots of gardens, which accommodates for a large number of different ecosystems required for the butterfly. So just as a quick reminder, there are of course four stages to the butterfly life cycle, and I'll just share a few of these four, just a brief explanation. So first there's the egg stage. The egg is put on a plant known as the host plant. The egg then hatches and the larvae comes out, which are the little caterpillars that we see all over. And they're born on a plant that's known as the host plant. Also, 
One other interesting fact about the caterpillar, they actually grow almost 100 times their size while they are still a caterpillar. This is also the phase where they eat the most as well. Then they go in their little cocoons. The amount of time that they spend in their cocoons, of course, varies on the exact species. And a lot of development happens. This is actually where they will form antennas, wings, and become the butterflies that we see. And then finally, the adult stage, which is also known as the reproductive stage. Oddly enough, some butterflies never eat during this phase. So they only eat when they are caterpillars. But of course, they will also reproduce during this time. So just a quick composite sketch of the life cycle of a butterfly. And with that, I thought I would just share with you several different butterflies that caught my eyes when I was working on this report. There's the buckeye. And as you can tell, they actually start in two places. They either start in California or North Carolina, and then they travel southward. So as far as Cuba and then down through Mexico and to the also through the United States. And in the summer, they can come up from from Canada as well. Now, interestingly, one thing that you'll notice is that butterflies actually don't live very long as butterflies. So they do a lot in their very short period. You'll see that the buckeye lives only six to 20 days. The great purple airstreak is another interesting one, very unique. It also originates from Guatemala and flies north through California and then east through Texas and then heads on to Mississippi and up Maryland. Again, this butterfly is, only lives as a butterfly for four to 10 days, so a very short period of time. They may not even make it their full migration period. This is another one that is interesting, although this one spends most of its time in Central America, Mexico, and then comes up to Texas and goes as far north as Nebraska. The Malachite green is yet another one that originates from Brazil and heads north. I'm sorry, actually this would be, this is that, the Malachite green. And then there's some morning folk the interesting thing about the morning folk is it is the longest living butterfly that we know of. It actually will live as a butterfly for 11 months. It also, interestingly, can hibernate, go into hibernation while it's in its cocoon. So the egg may hatch, the caterpillar will develop, go into the cocoon, and it can actually stay in hibernation mode all the way through the winter. And then become a butterfly in the spring and live for 11 months. It's one of the very few butterflies that will actually make it through its whole migration pattern. Just a couple of other ones, the tropical buckeye, it's of course in the same family as the other buckeye. And finally, the zebra swallow, swallow tail. So as you can see, Texas is very diverse. We actually have all species of butterflies from A to Z, over 400 butterflies. So the next time you're out and about, look around and you'll be surprised. You might be surprised what you'll find depending on where you travel in Texas. Back to you, Mr. Toastman after. We potentially have a problem that our Toastmaster has no sound. Rob, are you back? Rob is not back. Well, I can go ahead with the timing. Okay. Um, only Lee qualifies the time. Uh, Rob did not quite make his time, so only uh, Lee qualified. Okay. So, so no, no voting. But again, you know, if you have any uh, thoughts for any of the speakers, you can send them to a private chat message or directly to them. Yeah. Do you want? Do shall I just go ahead and take over for Rob until he's back? Sure. Let me do that. All right, as you mentioned, both of our speakers would love to have comments. If you have any comments for either of our speakers, please private chat them. We will not have a vote because we've had one disqualification tonight. With that, that we can move to our second portion of the meeting. The second portion of the meeting is, of course, table topics. 
Table Topics Master for this evening is going to be Karen Lee. Karen, what are your questions going to be for us tonight? Thank you, Mr. Phil and Toastmaster. Tonight, Rob mentioned what happened March 25th, 1965 in the United States of America. In Alabama, the Freedom March occurred with 25,000 folks marching for civil rights supporters. And they went from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama. Their purpose was to present a petition to Governor Wallace and he refused to accept their petition. And in order to qualify, ladies and gentlemen, you do have to speak for at least a minute and use the word of the day, copacetic. Munish, please tell us, Munish, please tell us the system of government in your country. Can you please repeat the question? Yes, sir. Please tell us the system of government in your country. Good morning, everybody. The system of government in our country. Our country, we do not have any democracy in our country. Our police officers, bureaucrats, politicians are not accountable. We are helpless. We can't do anything. If they are after somebody, if they want to trouble somebody, we can't raise our voice. The person who raises his voice, they suppress his voice. Mm. So that's the reason even the opposition do not dare to speak. It's not the, right now the people, those who are in opposition, they do not dare to speak. When they were in power, they also make the same thing they do not allow the opposition to speak. It will take a lot of time to we, we will also, in like a developed country, we will also have the same system when everybody is accountable and then we can have a smooth life. Sometime in our country, we are harassed, and if we complain to anybody, the file is all lies in their table, but they don't do anything. Sometimes the file gather dust, but people are helpless. We can't do anything. So that's the reason some of the people, when they leave this country, they do not want to come back to this country back because they think that the country where they are living, their job is done smooth. They do not have to go through red tapes, hurdles. So they want to live their life over there. Maybe they do the menial jobs over there and they do not want to return back to our country. And there are many people, those who think life is too short. We have got one life. It's better to live your life, not to take so much of stress. So mm -hmm. that's the reason there are many people, those who have a dream to settle abroad. Mm -hmm. A country like America, England, Australia, where they work hard and make money. And some of them, when they make money, they send the money to their country back uh, to their parents so they can buy the property because our currency levels, currency is very low. They, they learn, earn in pounds, they earn in dollars. The rate of the dollar is very high. The rate of the pound is very high. If they are earning 1,000, 2,000 pound in England, 1,000 pound, if they save 1,000 is a huge amount in India. They can have a luxurious life over here. Some of the people, those who settle abroad after their pension, they come back to India. What, whatever the pension they are getting from that country in their account, bank account, with that they are living the luxurious life in our country. Thank you. Over to the Toastmaster, please. Thank you, Manish. 
this in the year 1807, the first railway passenger service in England started. Have you ever ridden on a train? Cheryl Slagle. Where is Cheryl? Just received a text. Cheryl just lost power internet. <laughs> tonight, tonight is the night for this, apparently. Oh my. I'll oh. answer it. Okay, go ahead, John. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, back, oh, 1986. Me and my, some of my family, you know, we like to take some family vacations and stuff. We got on a train. That's why I lived in Amarillo. And me and my uh, three sisters and my brother, actually the, the cruise group, <laughs> we drove to Albuquerque and jumped on the Amtrak train that ran from Albuquerque. Actually, it starts in Chicago. We ran from Albuquerque to L.A., and spent a week in LA and then rode the train all the way back to Albuquerque. It took like, really it only took like a day and a half because the train runs pretty much nonstop. And I mean, it stops to pick up passengers along the way and everything, but it doesn't stop for long periods of time. You're in a station like 15 minutes and then you go. So it was a lot of fun. It was really interesting. And they had the club car and the, seen a car and you could sit there and watch the countryside go by and everything and it was all copacetic I mean it was comfortable I just we didn't get a compartment or anything so we just slept in our seats which were just reclining you know kind of airplane seats and there's a little more room and you can recline a little bit more but all in all it was a lot of fun I enjoyed it and I wouldn't mind doing a train trip again one of these days so I'd like to do a compartment and see what that like. Back to you. Thank you, John. Uh, on March 25th, 1920, the U.S. passed the Women's Suffrage Act. Do you vote? Karen Smith. Tell us, do you vote, Karen? Karen, the question is, tell us if you vote. Yes, I do vote. <laughs> I'm too sure. So I do vote. And when I vote, I try to make choices that will not only improve the way I live as a single person, but also will improve the way others live around me. So when I vote, I'm not only thinking of myself, but I'm thinking of the world as a whole. So I take on a broader sense of what's going on in the world and try to take um, top, top, top topics, things of that nature into account when I vote. So I generally don't vote for a certain party I just vote for what's best for my country. So I try to keep things copacetic and not go uh, too far to the left or too far to the right, but I want to keep things, um, I guess keep things middle of the road and vote for things that would best uh, benefit not only myself, but the folks in my neighboring neighborhoods and the folks, um, my nation and my country. Back to you, Miss Table Topic Master. <laughs> this time last year, in a New Jersey hospital, a man came up to the glass window in the emergency department and he had a cardboard sign that he held up and the sign said, thank you in emergency for saving my wife's life. I love you all. And the emergency department staff took the video. They never knew who the patient was 
and they never knew who the man was. Tell us how you show gratitude or are grateful. Why or why not? E. Paul. Tell us how you show gratitude or Thank if you're you. grateful. Thank you, Ms. Table Topics Master. I, I just want to say I really appreciate your straightforward questions. So how do I show gratitude and how, how do I show that I'm grateful? This is actually something that I, I feel like has been a work in progress for me my entire life, being able to recognize other people's contributions and make them feel like what they're offering is, is being recognized. And I, I think I struggled a lot when I was a little bit younger. I think it was difficult for me to show that I appreciated what people were doing for me. And it was often a source of conflict between me and people who I was close to because there would be a lot of effort being put in both parties, but sometimes even little things when they go unrecognized can lead to a sense of I guess misunderstanding or just not that one party can feel like they're not being appreciated for their efforts and it can lead to problems later down the line, even when things seemingly could be copacetic. And so I think for me, it's just struggling through certain relationships. It's kind of taught me to recognize even small things, just, you know, if someone does something helpful for you, even if it wasn't a large gesture to just say, thank you. I recognize that you did that for me. I appreciate you. It's very thoughtful of you to do this or to do that. And just don't ever feel shy to let it be known that something other uh, another person has done for you uh, has had an effect on you and like a positive effect on you. And I think that can a little a little appreciation can go a long way in terms of strengthening relationships, especially with people who we are close to. I will hand it back to you, Ms. Table Topics Master. Hi. On about this time last year in New York City, or a New York man used a drone to get his to give his phone number to a young woman on a rooftop who had been that he saw dancing and the female did text him back so mark sams how have you initiated or maintained relationships during covid-19 that has been a struggle uh, I've been able to keep some contacts with neighbors, uh, hopefully in a copacetic manner. By I'll go out walking a lot, and there are several other people in on my street and surrounding streets that will also walk a fair amount. So people that uh, some neighbors that I really don't know very well at least maintain some type of relationship that manner. Obviously, we all have used Zoom or Microsoft Teams at work, in my case, to maintain relationships, not just telephone, but uh, virtual, at least face-to-face -face relationships, either in a Toastmasters meeting or a church setting or a work setting. Aside from that, we are all of course, I rely a lot on text and email. And so I really, in the last few months especially, haven't curtailed a lot of trips. I mean, anywhere I need to go, like the grocery store a couple of times a week, the post office, et cetera, a store if I need to buy something, I go ahead and make that effort and then I'm able to at least have some interaction with strangers. So like everyone else, just doing the best I can to maintain those relationships, contacts with the outside world 
and looking forward to when it won't be quite so difficult. Madam Table Topics Master. Mark, may I have a timers report on who qualified, please? Yes, everybody qualified on time. Okay, and um, um, Mr. Grammarian, may I have a report? Who used the word of the day? Everybody used the word of the day except me. Okay. okay, so that means you have to, to vote. Let me, so it was Mark Sims, Karen Smith, John Vessels, and me. Okay, thank you. So we have on your vote, you have E. Paul that spoke to us about gratitude. Mark Sims spoke to you all about how he maintained relationships during COVID-19. John Vessel spoke about riding on the train. Karen Smith spoke to us about women's suffrage. So please cast your vote and send it to the vote counter. As a Karen reminder, Smith. that is Karen Smith. Make sure you pick Karen Smith, not Karen Lee. And Karen Lee, if you are finished and if our Toastmaster or Toastmasters plural don't have a need to talk that I can lead into the general evaluation portion of the meeting. I, am I, will, certain, I will certainly relinquish my time to our real Toastmaster who is back. Okay. Mr. General Evaluator, before you go, I, I just want to finish up with one more thing as far as some things that happened on this day and it goes to four people that were born on March 25th past years. And the first one that I want to talk about is in 1767, Joachim Murat, and I don't know if I'm mispronouncing that name or not, but it was Napoleon's brother-in-law who eventually became the king of Naples. So Joachim Murat was born in 1767 on March 25th. David Lean, and I don't know if any of you are familiar with David Lean, he is a British film director, and he was born on 19, in 1908 on March 25th. You may know the couple of the films that he did that are probably more famous than he is, and that is Bridge on the River Kwai and Lawrence of Arabia. So David Lean was born in 1908 on this day. In 1934, so we get a little bit closer to today's time, a political activist named Glorian Gloria Steinem was born 1934 on March 25th. And the last person I want to mention is the Queen of Soul. She's an American singer. In 1942, Aretha Franklin was born. And with that note, I will push it over to our general evaluator for the evening. Please help me to welcome back Mr. Mark Sims. Thank you all. In this poor we will hear from our speech evaluators, duty holders, and then I'll have a few remarks. We will first start off with Rob's evaluator, who is Mark Schroeder. So Mark, please give us your evaluation. Thank you so very much. All right, so let's, let me start off with the fact that when I thought I was going to be an evaluator tonight, I did not know what was coming. It's always interesting and very hard to know how to evaluate a Rod Hodder speech. But I'll do my best tonight as, as much as I can. I'm going to do a lot of things that I thought were really good with the speech. A couple of maybe one or two things to work on. And then finally, what I thought was the best thing overall. And I've got to tell you, first of all, the surprise. Even though I knew you needed a little bit of time to prepare, I should have guessed it right then and there. But I did not know for sure that you were going to do Rod Hodder. 
with regard to the two things in particular that we always look for is vocal variety and gestures. I got to tell you, a couple of times I closed my eyes deliberately to listen. I've got I've got headphones in, and they're really really good to hear voices. It's not your voice. I mean, you you actually change your voice enough that it, you do not sound like you. And certainly the gestures also. There's nobody's gonna that is gonna beat you for for the. Co content and quality of gestures tonight because you are all over the place. I don't, I'm not sure that there's a square inch of the screen that you didn't cover at some point in time. Not to mention the outfit. I don't know if the torn t-shirt, the torn shirt with the I love boxed wine really counts as a wife beater shirt or not, but it, it comes to mind, but, you know. But yeah, just in, incredible costume, the, the hair, everything that goes with it. One other thing that I really liked that I thought was interesting, just under the humor, you had a lot of humor in the speech and it may or may not have been intentional because we've talked about it, but it looked like the mustache was just beginning to slip a little bit. It was getting a little bit lower and closer to your mouth every, every, with every breath. So that was, that was actually something that made it even funnier. But more than anything else, of course, your, your goal was to talk about contests and how contests did the prepar how contests get prepared and some give us some contest tips and I thought you did that as well with humor so very good job on all of that a couple of things of course we did have some networking problems and you had some issues getting started off I gave you you said you wanted 30 seconds and I gave you a lot more than 30 seconds but somehow there was still some some coordination getting everything started real quickly from the from the shift because you're having some sound issues. You also, I, I, I hate to say this, but it's I don't get to say this very often in speeches. I wanted more cowbell. You had a cowbell. I, you actually had a real cowbell. I wanted more cowbell. <laughs> if you're going to have it, bang on it a couple of times so that we hear the cowbell. I want more cowbell. I couldn't really find too many too many things to complain about other than that because you kept in character and you kept everything going just right. So with regard to the, the spin it finishing up what I thought I saw, I love that you've reprised the role of Rod Hodder. Every time you do it, it's always fun. It's always entertaining. And now we've actually got the recording so we can make fun of you forever or rather you can make fun of yourself forever. We've got it on digital media. So that's a plus. I thought you did a very good job of meeting the, the goals tonight of having a project that was about planning and talking about how to plan a speech contest and have it go smoothly. And most importantly, you did it, at least for me, most importantly was you did it with humor. And that is a very, very tough thing to pull off. And I thought you pulled it off very well. Excellent speech. Excellent humor. Keep it up. Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Mark. And our other speaker was Lee King, and he is going to be evaluated by John Dessels. So John, please give us Lee's evaluation. All right, thank you, Mr. GE and fellow Toastmasters. Lee King's speech tonight was about Texas butterflies. And I like, I'm a sciencey kind of geeky, nerdy guy. So I really enjoyed the material. I like the story about, I mean, not the story, but I read the information about the butterflies. And I didn't realize that we had 400 different varieties in Texas. But she did present a good, well organized speech with a PowerPoint that presented us images of the butterflies. And when you talk about something that's as pretty as a butterfly to look at, it would have been kind of empty speech if you didn't have like the PowerPoint or at least some pictures of them so we could relate to it. And I think that was a really good choice. One thing I would have liked to have seen you change is when you presented your PowerPoint, you never put it into presentation mode. So I always saw the slides down the left side of the page. And when you put it into presentation, the slide fills the entire screen. And A, it's a little bigger, and B, it, you just don't see all that other stuff up there that I'd like to see that. Um, excuse me. I'd like also maybe a little information. You give us a lot, like, I know like the monarchs, I mean, it's like 3,000 miles that they will migrate from North Carolina and all that kind of stuff all the way down to Mexico. And maybe give us a little more 
information. You just tell us, it's like, yes, a lot of the butterflies don't live long enough to ever get down to Mexico. I mean, they die along the way. And that maybe something like that would be a kind of cool. The other thing, oh, let me see, where was it? Oh, I'm kind of curious, and maybe it just be something neat to add is like, are there any butterflies that just reside in Texas and they really don't migrate everywhere? Do butterflies, all butterflies migrate all over the country and not, you know, aren't territorial and just stick around their own neighborhood kind of thing? But those are the kind of things I'd like to, you know, maybe to add or something in the future. Um, but all in all, I mean, it was a, it was a very interesting speech. Oh, that one other thing. I'm sorry. When you were doing the slides about their formation, you talked about being at a cocoon stage, and then you went straight to an adult. And but your slide said it was a pupil or pupil stage, which is the same. But I would like the terminology to match the slide so it you know people can follow it more easily. And then they said, "Well, what happened to the pupil stage?" Because that hit me for just a second. It's like, okay. Anyway, so that, but no, it was a good speech. I liked it. I liked seeing the pictures of some of the different butterflies. I'm glad you gave them their little names and had everything to present on them and the information about their lives and, you know, how long they live. And all in all, interesting speech. And I, I very much enjoyed it. But like I said, I almost went geeky. But I think a lot of people can enjoy it just as a matter of fact kind of thing. And hey, butterflies are pretty. Back to you, Mr. G. Thank you, John. Well, for starters, John, I'll be careful about giving a PowerPoint speech around you because you'll put someone to work, dude. <laughs> You're tough. And as far as your other question, butterflies are free, so they can go to whatever state they want to. Yeah. <laughs> but, sorry, I, I could not resist. Had to. I would like to ask our timer, Dagan Newland, if our Speakers qualified on time. I'm sorry, our evaluators qualified on time. <laughs> well, they, they are speakers, but yes, <laughs> both, both, both qualified on time. Okay, thank you. In that case, please vote for the best evaluator. You can vote for either Mark Schroeder or for John Vessels. And I'm going to quickly send in my vote to Karen. And at this point, we want to hear from our treaty holders. And I believe that Cheryl is still gone. So in yeah, that case, E. Paul, would you please give your uh, duty holder uh, report? Okay. So for our counter, actually, people did pretty well today. Mark, I... I heard you, Mark Sims, I heard you say uh, just once, just now. Maybe I wasn't paying attention earlier. I don't think I heard anything. Mark Schroeder, as always, did not have any. Dagan had three uhs. Rob, I didn't think I heard anything either. Karen Smith, I heard four uhs and a so. Let's see. Karen Lee, I heard one uh. And John Vessels, I had two you knows and one uh. And for my grammarian report, Mark Schroeder, I like that you used lists when you talk. You use short sentences, compound sentences. It gives your, whatever you're saying, it gives it some good variety. I kind of like that. It's not really grammatical, but that's just something that I noticed. Rob, I liked your use of the word implement. You had good use of similes and metaphors. You said swinging that ax for in, in describing the guitar player. I like that. Karen Smith, uh, I liked your use of the word or of the, the phrase middle of the road. Karen Lee, I already mentioned, I, I like your straightforward questions. That's again, not, not really grammatical, but just wanted to put that out there. Munish uh, had a lot of good uses uh, of words related to power and helplessness. Uh, suppression, op opposition, he used raise our, raise our voice, red tape, menial, those are all very good words. 
I did notice that sometimes when I believe it's when you're trying to come up with more things to say, you tend to have run on sentences. You'll kind of just do a stream of consciousness sort of thing. I think there was actually a good stopping point after you had talked about the, uh, I guess the, the, the whole power, power versus helplessness. And then I think you kept going on a little bit longer, which actually put you past the time. Let's see. John Vessels, you had a very good descriptive words uh, regarding scenery. I thought that was really nice. You, well, uh, one thing I, I used matter of fact, which I liked. One, one thing that I noted was you said me and my family drove to Albuquerque. This is like a stickler thing, but my family and I, instead of me and my family. <laughs> and Oh, another thing, I think you had your paper over your mic. So sometimes when you were speaking, the paper blocked your mic. So we kind of had a muffled sound just for future reference. And then for Lee, uh, you used, uh, nevertheless, which I really liked, you used that properly. You did a lot of the as blank as comparisons, which I think helped a lot in trying to get us to understand the, you know, breadth or size of certain uh, things that you were trying to make comparisons between. You did as far as, as high as, as big as. So I like that. And I think that's all I have. Thank you, Epa. And at this time, I'll give my thoughts on the meeting. For starters, everyone showed up. Obviously, Cheryl must have got kicked off early, but Everyone that had committed to a role was here, which is always very helpful. We got to say the Pledge of Allegiance with a really, really big flag. First, I was wondering, okay, it's taken a few seconds to, to bring in the flag, but that's because maybe it's huge. And so if it had stayed there the full time, we might've been distracted by it if it had already been there. The theme on this day, that's always interesting to kind of go back down memory lane. And Rob went over a lot of material and so did Karen. But one thing that hit me, one on this day, birthday that Rob brought up later on was Gloria Steinem. By my math, she would be 87, which is hard to fathom because she seems like she ought to be forever young, obviously a very vocal, very famous activist for women's rights. And it just makes no sense that she could be that old, but time marches on. Just a few thoughts on the speakers. Rob, at first I'm wondering, okay, it's taking a little bit of time for Rob to start. That's because you were doing a costume change which it's an incredible you were able to do that fast, get into the Rod Hodder outfit. And what is really great is you were going over some really good details on planning implementation, but if you're not careful, that could be a little bit dry, maybe even boring. Okay, I think you took care of that, buddy. I mean, you <laughs> were very interesting. The, that is a great contrast of the kind of methodical discussion on planning, implementation, you can do better versus the great energy and the great fun of your speech. Really like that. And Lee, I definitely learned some stuff on the butterflies because for one, maybe I'm not looking hard enough, but I don't see them anymore. It, it may be kind of like fireflies that you, or lightning bugs we used to call them, that you don't see them, but I'll definitely keep an eye out. I did not know about that volume of butterflies, 400 in Texas. And then one thing, the picture of the tropical buckeye, the pattern on its wings, I swear it looked like it had, they were huge eyes. If you take a second look at that. So great pictures and really good information that I was not expecting. He had to do a lot of work on that. And to, I guess in a sense, sum up the meeting, 
it was a night where a lot of things happened. Rob loses his sound. Cheryl gets kicked off, which I'm a little bit grateful because usually I'm the one who starts saying, hey, what's wrong? Are you guys there? Why is no one answering me? And then I find out that I got kicked off. So in this case, it happened to someone else, not necessarily copesthetic, but the luck of the draw for a couple of you. But overall, very informative meeting, fun meeting, and one where we responded well to challenges. At this time, I'd like to ask you for a vote for the best of the big three. And that can either be our Toastmaster, Rob Giles, our Table Topics Master, Karen Lee, or Mark Sims, myself, the General Evaluator. So I am about to type in my vote. Quick reminder for everyone, that vote goes to Karen Smith. Yes, Karen Smith, there you go. And while the votes are being tallied for big three, I'll come back to Karen Smith here in a few minutes and get who all of our winners are. We can segue into the business meeting. For starters, it, Munish is, uh, was visiting with us again, which is always good to see him. And Munish, thank you for participating in the table topics. And also Funmi, and please forgive me if I don't have that right, is back with us. So please come on, uh, Introduce yourself again and, and just let us know what you thought of the meeting. She may have oh, caught my oh. bug. Sorry. Um, I thought the meeting was actually good. The thing is actually I'm still on the road. I thought I would have gotten home right now, but yeah, I at least I was able to listen in on the meeting and I believe the meeting, everything went really great. Thank you. We appreciate you joining us again. And definitely we're always on the lookout for our great new members. We're proud of the new members we have. So please do keep us in mind. Because we definitely, we have a good group here. We definitely want to expand that. And as part of this business meeting, I would like to ask Dagan a question I had emailed is, uh, is there some money that we owe the District 50? Not that I'm aware of. I got an email from them saying that we had, hopefully it wasn't a scam, saying we had six days to send in some money we owed for renewals into to District 50. So I forwarded you the email. So when you get an opportunity, you can see what it was. So at least I didn't give them my any personal identifiable information or driver's license or credit card or anything like that. But, uh, and I could not figure it out either, but I did get that communication that was purported to be from District 50. Well, as far as I know, we never pay the district for membership. Okay. That is directly but, yeah, was it, would it be membership dues or would it be for TOIs? No, it would be it would be membership dues, but I think maybe they misworded it, but because we have renewal in six days, that, that would be the kind of in some ways the cutoff for the renewal for the next six months. Mm -hmm. I think it's a legitimate email. I, I'd have to double check on it, but perhaps they worded it improperly. Not yet. They're just talking about the it's Step up sort of program. Everything's done by the 31st. They want a 50% plus of members by the 31st complete. Oh, so it's not really to them. It's just renewals. Oh, okay. to, to yeah, just renewals in general. Toastmasters.org. Got yeah. it. That makes sense. Okay, it's more of an exhortation then rather than for us to send them money. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, always good to be exhorted on that on as many, all the renewals that we can get. Did you get that, Mr. Grammarian? <laughs> I did. A very good Mark Schroeder <laughs> exhortation rather than extortion, although both can be effective in their own way. 
And I would like to ask if anyone else has any business to bring up before the club. Of course, you know I do. Yeah, you know I do. (laughs) The first thing, and we'll start off with kind of the mundane and then we'll move into something a little bit more exciting. But the first thing is that I have the member orientation normally every Saturday at 10 a.m. Last week, I moved it to Sunday at 10 a.m. This week, I'm moving it to Sunday as well at 10 a.m. So if anybody is interested, I will. Last week, I was going to send out an email. I I will do my best to get an email out tonight or tomorrow regarding that, just as a reminder, if anybody wants to attend. And the, the more exciting news is that we did have a great contest, Area 33 contest. It did run very smoothly, as Rod had mentioned. And we did have an exemplary representative from our club speaking well on his behalf, behalf, but also well for Dallas Social Toastmasters, and that's Mr. Mark Sims. Give Mark a round of applause. He did a fantastic job, really. Uh, we It should have been recorded, so we should be able to get a piece of that if, if we want, or at least depending on how what Mark wants to do with that. But it, it was a great speech. We had other great speakers there as well. So it was a great contest overall, I felt. And the content was good. And Mark did a fantastic job. So that's all for me. Thank you, Rob. And yes, and I signed off on the form that says it can be uh, recorded. So if anyone ever wants to listen to it, they're welcome. And you did an excellent job as the contest chair, Rob. So let me vote Rob for the district speech contest contest chair. How about that? No, no, don't shoot me. <laughs> but no, I know that was a lot of work just in the small part I had in the, being in attendance at the briefings, hearing the dialogue that was going on between you and Mary and everyone. But that had to be a lot of work. Thank you. And before we get to the winners, does anyone else have any business to bring up? And I'm not hearing any. So Karen Smith, would you please disclose to us who the winners are? Cute. Okay. Um, Mr. General Evaluator, our winners are this evening, of course, the best speaker went to Lee King, so we didn't have a vote there. The best table topic went to E. Paul on gratitude, who spoke on gratitude. The best evaluator was Mr. Mark Schroeder, um, evaluating Rod Hotter. <laughs> <laughs> and the best of the big three goes to Mr. Mark Sims, our general evaluator. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Back over and, All right. And everyone, with no other comments, no other business, thank you so much. And everyone have a great weekend. All right. As your Zoom coordinator, we will close the meeting. Everybody, very quickly as we close, jazz hands. Mm. There we go. Three, two.